أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان The night tonight we will be talking about the topic of supplications and prayers The holy month of Ramadan has multiple advantages One of them is our prayers will be answered that they have been guaranteed by the Prophet peace be upon him where he has said Dua'ukum fihi mustajab During the month of Ramadan when you ask the Almighty for something you will be rewarded back for that thing that you have asked The question is that <clears throat> what should we ask and how should we ask Prior to that we should look at the abundance and the treasures of the prayers and supplications that we are left with by our infallible Imams, the members of Ahlul Bayt One beautiful quality of Ahlul Bayt that they have left treasures of beautiful, elegant and eloquent prayers and supplications for us, their followers, to take. In fact, those prayers, those eloquent words of prayers and supplications are very much indicative of their infallibility. You would recognize that hardly anyone can use those eloquent and beautiful words that our Imams use when they have a prayers with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is called whispered prayers or monologues in Arabic they are called munajat or dua when you look at those beautiful words of prayers you will understand the value and the stature of Ahlul Bayt because they are unrivaled by anyone else with such eloquency with such deep meaning of the prayers that they will say the scholars use those words of a prayers as a testimonial to the fact that our Imams are infallible now when you look at those prayers and supplications you will see that they have two fundamental features number one is that the prayers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, has the collective sense of responsibility meaning that the Imams السلام, when they narrate and recite their prayers they are socially responsible they are putting themselves in our own positions as if we are the ones talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they teach us the way that they teach us they embody themselves as sinners as normal regular wrongdoer people who have been finding themselves very um, in remorse and sorry therefore they speak with the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with guilt that means that they place themselves in our shoes they embody our own positions when they talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they in their prayers you will see that our Imams and their prayers are significant others they do the prayers for the sake of the humanity for us to learn from them and imitate them for example when you look at Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam when he says that la ilaha illa anta subhanak 
نفسي وتجرأت بجهلي O oh my Lord, be glorified you I have incurred injustice against myself The Imam is infallible He does not commit any wrongdoing He does not incur injustice against himself Rather, he is speaking in our behalf he positioning himself in our positions. He speaks with our own words, with our words, as if the same thing that happens with a mother. You see, sometimes the mother or the father are agonized by the child's pains. For example, if the son or daughter failed in their school, they do not answer well their test. The ones who are more agonized than the children are the parents. Why? Because of their passion toward the children, because of the love toward the children. Sometimes when the child is inflicted with a disease, a congenital disease, and he's paralyzed, you see the agony in the face of the mother. The mother suffers more than the child. Why? because of the love that the mother has toward the child, the significant other, this little child, in the eyes of her, of his or her mother. Therefore, you see the care of the mother far away, beyond the care of the child to himself, the understanding of the child to himself. Maybe the child is oblivious about his own disorder. He doesn't recognize his illness. Therefore, he's indifferent. Or a child that flanks the class, flanks the, job, the subject, he's oblivious, he's careless. But the mother and the father, due to their passion toward the child, they feel very agonized. The same thing with our imams. They feel our own pain. Therefore, they put themselves in our positions when they talk to their Lord. You see, for example, this concept is demonstrated in the day of Ashura when Imam al Hussein السلام, used to weep and cry. His sister would ask him, Why would you cry, O oh my brother? He would say, I am crying for 30,000 soldiers who will be going to hell because of me. Look at the passion, the love that Imam السلام, had even toward his enemy. That passion is inclusive, is unconditional. The same thing you can say about Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. This equality of a prayer is vividly demonstrated in Sahifa al-Sajjadiyya, the Psalms of Islam that has been composed by Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. You see the Imam has composed this narrative the book, the Sahifa al-Sajjadiyya, after the tragedy of Karbala. You see, his prayers are always toward others, nothing for himself. He prays for his parents. He prays for his relatives. He prays for the neighbor. He prays for the regular, regular Muslim citizens. He also prays for the Coast Guards, the Coast Guard at his time were the ones who belonged to Bani Umayyah. Maybe man, one, ma, many of those soldiers and Coast Guards, they have, in, they have been involved in the massacre of Karbala and the tragedy of Karbala. Yet the Imam alayhi salam show us tolerance, teach us tolerance. He prays for them. He says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. وحصن ثغور المسلمين بعزتك وأيد حماتها بقوتك وأسبغ, وأسبغ عطاياهم من جدتك He prays for those coast guard those who go defend the territory of the Islamic nation or he teaches his tolerance the tolerance, the genuine tolerance of Islam that exists in the Islamic teachings and fundamentals through the dua of Makarim al Akhlaq. He says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad, wa saddidni li an u'arid man ghashani bin nusr. 
give me the ability, the capability that I will return the one who has cheated me with advice. I give him the true advice, the true statement. Or I reward someone who has abandoned me, who has neglected me with good things, that I do good toward that person. And I give back the one who has deprived me from his giving. But in return, give me the ability that I return good toward him. Someone who severes his ties, severes his ties with me, I reconnect with him. And someone who gossips about me, who does backbiting against me, help me, O oh God, that I mention him in a good term. And then he says, Someone who does good to me, enable me that I thank him and appreciate him. While I turn a blind eye against whoever does bad things and misbehaves against me. This is how Ali ibn al Hussein teaches teach the society to be a tolerant society toward each other, toward others. And this is what we need nowadays in this world that we live in today, brothers and sisters. The second feature of the words of the Imams السلام, during their prayers is that their prayers and their words and sayings are very heart penetrating. They penetrate the souls. They diffuse in deep inside our spirits. They shake us from fundamentals. You will see that our hearts are changed upon listening to their words. This is a capability that only our Imams have, only the infallible have. Unlike many of our discourse, unlike the discourse of many scholars, and knowledgeables and scientists. The scholars, the speakers, me and alike, we speak to the, brain, to, the, to the ears and eyes of the audience and the viewers. But the Imams, when they talk, they talk to the hearts of the viewers. They penetrate the heart and they manipulate the hearts and the spirits of their audience. The similar ability God has given it to shaitan, devil, iblis. Iblis also manipulate the heart of people. He whispers in the spirit and hearts of people, but on the negative side. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ أَلَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ Shaitan has the capability to whisper inside my spirit and soul inside your spirit and soul and become manipulative, manipulate our hearts. The opposite effect is giving to our infallibles. The Imams, the prophets, the Quran itself has the ability to penetrate the hearts. The Almighty Allah speaks of the quality of Quran. He says that, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا إِلَى مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ ترى أعينهم تفيض من الدمع مما عرفوا من الحق. When they hear the and listen to the words of Quran, you see that their eyes become full of tears, meaning that they have, their their heart have changed so drastically that their 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 ear their eyes become full of tears and they become tearful when they listen to those words of Quran. The same thing with the words of Imams, the infallibles. We have a narration that says, Kalamukum Noor. Your words are ray of light. Al Imam al Rida alayhi salam tells his companions, he says, Rahimallahu Abdan Rahimallahu Abdan Ahya Amrana. May God bless that servant who 
appraise us, who make our affair very public, bring it to public. Then someone asks, how does he do that? He says, يَتَعَلَّمْ عُلُومَنَا He learns our knowledge. وَيُعَلِّمُهَا النَّاسِ Then he teaches them to people. فَإِنَّ النَّاسِ لَوْ عَلِمُوا مَحَاسِنَ كَلَامِنَا لَتَّبَعُونَا If they hear the beauty of our words, they follow us. They spontaneously follow us. My advice to everybody, to our dear viewers, instead of into going into deep debate about the truth of our religion and our faith, to change the opposing party, if you just mention some words of prayers of our Imams, you see that their hearts will be transformed, will be changed 180 degree. Why? Because their words are hearts penetrating. They change the hearts of people. We will come back after that. اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا جليل يا جميل يا وكيل يا كفيل يا دليل يا قبيل يا مديل يا منيل يا مقيل يا محيل سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا دليل المتحيرين يا غياث المستغيثين يا صريخ المستصرخين يا جار المستجيرين يا أمان الخائفين يا عون المؤمنين يا راحم المساكين يا ملجأ العاصين يا غافر المذنبين يا مجيب دعوة المضطرين سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا ذا الجود والإحسان يا ذا الفضل والامتنان يا ذا الأمن والأمان يا ذا القدس والسبحان يا ذا الحكمة والبيان يا ذا الرحمة والرضوان يا ذا الحجة والبرهان يا ذا العظمة والسلطان يا ذا الرأفة والمستعان يا ذا العفو والغفران سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back with the beautiful and elegant words of prayers of Dua Joshan Al Kabir. We are in segment number 13, 14, and 15 tonight. 
The theme of segment number 15 is to bestow on us the desired things, what we desire from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it starts like this. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika ya jalilu, ya jameelu, ya wakeel, ya kafeelu, ya dalilu, ya qabeelu, ya mudeel, ya munil, ya muqeelu, ya muheel. O oh Allah, verily I beseech thee in thy name, O oh, the glorious, the virtuous, the protector, the patron, the guide, the guarantor, bestower of wealth, bestower of blessings, bestower of strength, acceptor of repentance, praise to be thee. The word guarantor and the word protector and patron. Ya kefilu, ya delil. In today's advanced countries, world, you see that they have insurance for everything. If you buy a car, you have to have an insurance. If you buy a new home and you want to do mortgage, you have to have a new insurance. If you are an employee, you have to have health insurance. If you are an imp employer, you have to have work income insurance. If you are a professional, you need, ha you need to have insurance against your practice. Insurance means that it will protect you and it will guarantee your work, that nothing goes wrong to your work. If someone sues you, if something goes wrong, then the insurance will pay for the damages. Now in our daily activities, when we want to do good things, sometimes those good things are very difficult, very difficult to achieve. They are humongous. Sometimes they are dangerous. They are out of reach. How do we do them? We rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who will ensure those good works. He would say, do your work and do not be afraid. I am the one who will fix your troubles. I am the one who will pay for your damages. I am the one who will make sure that you will succeed if you do those actions. For example, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those people who struggle for our cause, for the cause of God, putting God in their eyes and thinking about nothing but the Lord, and what brings satisfaction to him and his cause, those people will be succeeding. Those people will see success. And he's the one who will ensure them. He's the one who will protect them from any trouble, from any litigation, from any mistakes. Once you believe that what you have done guarantees God's satisfaction, then you have to come at peace with it. You have to do it because you should realize and you should be assured that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not let you down. He will make you succeed. Those who struggle in our ways, they will be succeeding. Some people think that struggle here, jihad means that you grab a weapon, arm and fight. But that's not the only one. What's in reality is is anything that you struggle for, anything that has and guaranteed God's acceptance and satisfaction. Whatever step, whatever effort you do in that way is considered to be struggle, is considered to be jihad. Why? Because you are doing it for the sake of the Almighty. Now he has guaranteed that you will be succeeding. So here in this dua, when you say, Ya kafilu, Ya Dalil, you are the one who will guide me. I don't know my path, but I depend on you and take my path. You will take me to the right destination. And you are my guarantor. You are my insurer. You are the one who will ensure my work. Why? Because I am doing this all for your sake. I am doing this all for your cause. This is segment 
number 13. And then we have segment number 14. The theme of segment number 14 is to seek refuge, where it says, Ya Dalil al Mutahirin, Ya Ghiath al Mustaghithin, Ya Sarikh al Mustasrahin, Ya Jar al Mustajirin, Ya Aman al Khaifin, Ya Aun al Mu'minin, Ya Rahim al Masakin, Ya Melja al Asin, Ya Ghafir al Mudnibin, Ya Mujiba Dawat al Mutarin, Guide of the Waylaid, Rescuer of those who appeal, helper of those who call, aider of those who call, shelter of the fearful, succorer of the faithful, merciful to the indigenous, refuge for the disobedient, forgiver of the sinner, responder to the supplicant. These are the words that we seek refuge when we are in trouble, we use them in order to seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word that it says, Ya Dalil al Mutahirin, Ya Ghiath al Mustaghithin. Sometimes many people seek refuge to entities other than God. For, for example, during the time of colonial powers, like the British Mandate or French Mandate, the colonized nation was totally dependent on the colonial power. If they wanted wealth, they would look at them. If they want power, they would look at them. If they want order and organization and facilities, they would look at the colonial power. Even after the colonial era, still there are countries, nations and states that heavily depend on others for everything. If they want strength, military strength and power, they take refuge in them. If they want financial support, they take refuge on them. If they want security, they rely on them. But how many of them always have kept their promises? Not many. They let them down in their desperate moments. When they really need them, they let them down. In Vietnam, there were some certain agents and emissaries who were fighting on behalf of the colonial powers and behalf of the United States Army. But when the United States Army to decided to withdraw, they abandoned all their agents. They were seeking refuge, but they abandoned them. The only entity that promises and keep his promise true is the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we seek refuge and seek his guidance and take refuge to him, he would never let us down. Let us down. This is number 14. And then number 15. And the last one is that when we ask for more bounties and benefits, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us plenty of bounties and benefits and mercies. Should we say this is enough or we should continue asking? No, the hadith, the narrations, the verses all encourage us to ask for more. وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ So this segment says يَا ذَا الْجُودِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ يَا ذَا الْفَضْلِ وَالْإِمْتِنَانِ يَا ذَا الْأَمْنِ وَالْأَمَانِ يَا ذَا الْقُدْسِ وَالْسُبْحَانِ يَا ذَا الْحِكْمَةِ وَالْبَيَانِ يَا ذَا الرَّحْمَةِ وَالْرِضْوَانِ يَا ذَا الْحُجَّةِ وَالْبُرْهَانِ يا ذا العظمة والسلطان يا ذا الرأفة والمستعان يا ذا العفو والغفران O Master of Liberty and Beneficence Most Gracious and Obliging Master of Peace and Security Most Holy and Above All Defects Master of Wisdom and Manifestation Master of Mercy and Satisfaction Master of Grandeur and Sovereignty Master of, master of kindness and succor, master of pardon and forgiveness. So the Almighty encourages us, if you want to reach perfection, if you want to ask more blessings and more mercies, then you're welcome. Ask for more bounties. Always, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous entity. 
You never say no. Ask as much as you can and ask for grand things, for big things, and you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always respond to that. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. O creatures of Allah, the most beloved of Allah is he whom Allah has given power to act against his passions so that his inner side is submerged in grief and the outer side is covered with fear. The lamp of guidance is burning in his heart. He has provided entertainment for the day that is to befall him. He regards what is distant to be near himself and takes the heart to be light. He looks and perceives, he remembers and enhances the tempo of his actions. He drinks sweet water to whose source his way has been made easy. So he drinks to satisfaction and takes the level path. He has put off the clothes of desires and got rid of worries except the worry peculiar to him. He is saved from misguidance and the company of people who follow their passions. He has become the key to the doors of guidance and the lock for the doors of destruction. He has seen his way and is walking on it. He knows his pillar of guidance and has crossed over his deep water. He has caught hold of the most reliable supports and the strongest ropes. He is on that level of conviction which is like the brightness of the sun. He has set himself for Allah glorify for performance of the most sublime acts of facing all that befalls him and taking every step needed for it. He is a lamp in darkness. He is a dispeller of all blindness. He to the obsequial, remover of complexities and a guide in vast deserts. When he speaks, he makes you understand. Whereas when he remains silent, then it is safe to do so. He did everything only for Allah, and so Allah also made him his own. Consequently, he is among the minds of his faith and the stakes in his earth. He has enjoined upon himself to follow justice. The first step of his justice is the rejection of desires from his heart. He describes right and acts according to it. There is no good which he has not aimed at or any likely place of virtue to which he has not proceeded. He has placed his brains in the hands of the Qur'an. Therefore the Qur'an is his guide and leader. He gets down when the Qur'an puts down its weight and settles where the Qur'an settles down.